What's up, fam? Uh, so, hopefully you watched my video last night. Uh, this coronavirus thing is a heck of a lot worse than anybody's taking it credit for. Uh, so, something I learned after that video when I was home. Uh, two things. For, for one, nobody is nearly concerned enough about this. It is not being treated seriously. Uh, just the facts of how it spreads and that it's virtually indistinguishable from the cold or the flu to in healthy people means that it's it's spreading a lot faster than anybody recognizes uh, uh, the only actual facts that anybody tried to counter me with was a, a friend of mine actually I've debated him before on this channel uh, Britt uh, was telling me that the number of confirmed cases, the number of deaths, the number of severe cases have all been going down in the last eight days. Well, that's lovely, but that's going down because 90, like 8% of the cases right now are in China. They have like 80,000 reported cases and they have been taking this extremely seriously. They, they, they've denied travel to 100 million people. They've shut down a huge portion of their economy. Like, they're, they've told people in affected areas to stay in their homes and not spread it. They're putting anybody with confirmed cases and anybody who's been in contact with people with confirmed cases in quarantine. This is a massive response. And because of that, it's going down in China, which is where most of it is. The problem is there's so many seed cases all over the world and the rest of the world isn't treating it that seriously that we're about to see the numbers spike up like you wouldn't believe. The only reason they haven't spiked up more is most of the world can't even fucking test for it and it looks like the cold or the flu. So what came, what the, the, the other thing is I just discovered uh, that two hours away from where I work and live they found a, a case of community spread coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, they don't know who he caught it from. They don't know how he caught it. It was just spread in the community. And they finally got it tested and it came back positive for COVID-19. He, was, he, he wasn't traveling. It is spreading in the community. And people from that area come to my dealership and buy cars. Like... When somebody gets it and we don't know who spread it to him, that person's still out there spreading it to other people. And those people are traveling all over and doing business. You know, people live in one town and work in the next town over. And they, they go to shopping. They go for weekender trips. All this kind of stuff. They go on vacations to other countries. In a rational world, like... Northern California would be shut down. Nobody would be allowed to travel. They would be having the ent entire FBI, Homeland Security, police departments, like all law enforcement would be working for the CDC as investigators to find out who people came into contact with. They'd have National Guard shutting down areas and, and in, in, uh, forcing quarantines and uh, all this kind of stuff. The, uh, but we're not going to have that happen until the last minute because we care about profit more than human lives. This thing needs to be stopped before it's endemic or it's going to cost a huge, huge amount in human lives. So to be clear, and this is important because I know a lot of people are stressed out about coronavirus and whatnot. I don't think if you're healthy, you should be worried about yourself. Like the, the chances of actually dying from coronavirus are, are pretty low right? there's there's bigger concerns the, the issue is oh, at a broader systemic level the fact that we know millions of people will die if it's not taken seriously and if it's not addressed properly so uh, we, we need to be in a, in a sane world with this kind of threat before us and the fact that our government is not taking it as seriously as we should we should all be having mas have masks, obviously, because of the coronavirus, and yellow vests out there in a universal strike, fucking burning shit, and demanding that our government take this seriously. Because we, 
now have the chance to stop it before it's endemic. So it stops spreading, and then the, we come out with the vaccine, which is going to take like a year or two, and, and then we can inoculate everybody, and then it's gone. Like, that virus won't exist anymore. That's still possible. But if we don't do that, it'll just become endemic and just be a much more fatal version of the flu. So every year, because it's going to mutate like the flu, because it has the same RNA structure as the flu, it's going to mutate. You're going to need a new vaccine every year. And even with the flu vaccine, about 50, 000, 12 to 60,000 people a year die of the flu. So if something kills at 20 times the same rate, then even with those vaccines, we could still see a million people a year dying from the coronavirus if we don't stop it in time. This is a tremendous threat. We need to be nationalizing pharma labs. We need to be sh shutting down whole regions. We need to be stopping travel. Like, this is a far bigger threat than the fucking economy. So, anyway, fam, uh, keep your heads up. Spre spread the awareness around, because that's the first thing. Everybody is underestimating this thing. We have to explain why this is different than other diseases. It's different because it looks like the cold or flu. It's not being caught. It's not being tested for. People can communi can be contagious for a week or two without even knowing they're sick. This makes it like the perfect storm of viruses. And we need to take it seriously. So uh, the other th thing that's super important to talk about is how this is going to affect elections. Now, it's, it can only help Bernie in the primary because the more there's fears of coronavirus, the more people are like, yeah, I want free, guaranteed coronavirus, free at the point of service. I don't want to have to pay whatever some big pharma company wants me to pay. The Trump administration won't promise that it'll be affordable, whereas Bernie's saying it'll be free at the point of service. Which one do I want? Uh, that's easy. So I, I think it only helps him in the primary, but he's probably going to win the primary anyway. My big concern right now is that Trump will weaponize fears of the coronavirus and that will suppress voting turnout in urban areas because that's where the most people are and it'll disproportionately help him because obviously more of his voters are rural. So if he all of a sudden starts taking this seriously come October and November and shutting down cities and and uh, you know, making it so you can't travel, or you know, you, get, you know, putting rules out like you you have to wear a mask in public. This is going to scare a lot of people, and they're not going to want to go want to go vote. Now, of course, some states will respond and have like ballots in the mail, and there's other things you can do, but it will undeniably suppress the voter turnout, and, and that's a a huge potential problem that we're going to have to find a way to deal with. So, anyway, uh, hate to be such a ray of sunshine for you today, uh, but, you know, it's a serious issue. We need to be taking it seriously, and we need people in charge that we can trust to take it seriously. Uh, the worst fucking thing, I didn't watch the whole press conference with uh, Trump about the coronavirus. I know he was horrible. He, he, he like, downplayed it, no big deal. He's trying to keep people from panicking because he's trying to protect the fucking stock market. Uh, no, I mean, this is something people should be panicked over. There should be a huge response. And anyway, he uh, he made Pence the guy in charge of responding to it. So now uh, it's trending on Twitter, Pence-demic, because he's doesn't believe in science. His own home state had an HIV outbreak because he, uh, he... The worst part of the whole thing is, I think it was near the end, Pence is behind Trump uh, listening to him, and he, he goes like this, and wipes his nose with his hand. <laughs> He's a politician. I, I didn't see if he shook hands after that, but we know he shook hands after that. They go around shaking hands with everybody all the fucking time. So he wiped his nose with his hand, and then he's shaking hands with people, and this is the guy running the response to the coronavirus. We're all going to fucking die. <laughs> uh, we, we need competent leadership. We need Bernie Sanders. And we need to be, be fighting for him like never before. And we need, we need to be 
we need we need to be protesting and we need to be get, bringing attention to this we need to be getting local government and for uh and state government like responding to this in a more serious way so i i did come into work today i was actually debating it because again uh this is a huge issue and i think it's more important to spread awareness of this than go to work like we should be in a universal strike right now uh, but me being out there by myself ain't going to do anything. So um, I'm going to take some time to see if we can organize anything uh, because <laughs> we need to be bringing attention to this. Everybody is underestimating this from Donald Trump on down. Uh, the reason... Did I say this? I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, but I don't know if I said this, but yesterday after I made the video... I spent five hours on four different social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube. And uh, it was my least successful five hours of social media I have ever done in my entire life in terms of likes, in terms of shares, in terms of, of comments. Uh, nobody cares. There, people are doing what I did yesterday morning, and the, the, you see coronavirus, and you keep on scrolling. Because ah, it's just like the SARS. It's eh, bad. It's just hyperbole. It's no big deal. But this is different. It's legit different. It's a different type of threat. And it needs to be treated more seriously. So uh, my YouTube video did actually get a little bit more than average likes. I mean, not likes, uh, views. So that's good. But we need to be sharing this this out there and, and educating people on why this is different so that we can then bring attention to it and start protesting and start forcing governments to actually take it seriously. So get out there with me and, and let's try to let's do what we can to save lives in the future.